All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 127, and today I will be proposing a potential function for the Queen's Chamber Shaft System and the enigmatic feature known as Gattenbrink's Door. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube. Don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that prepare twice per week. Please like, comment, share, and stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage that you will not see anywhere else. Check out the members only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's intro. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder, the second 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour is on and bookings are now available. If you are interested in coming to Egypt to see the pyramids for yourself on this epic adventure experience coming up in early winter later this year, please send me an email to contact at thelandofchem.com with the subject line Egypt Tour 3 and I will send you the full tour itinerary and pricing details. Thank you all so much and I will see you soon here in the land of Kem. Now, I wanna give a huge thank you to Danny Jones from the Concrete Podcast for having me on the show and a warm welcome to all of the new subscribers who made your way here after watching that episode. If you haven't seen it yet, this is a massive three and a half hour long conversation going into greater depth than I've ever reached during an interview. I'll put a link in the video description below and there is also an abbreviated version now available on the best of Danny Jones channel that is only one and a half hours, also linked in the video description below. And one more point of housekeeping. I have created an entire series of playlists for all of the new subscribers and for anyone who wants to deep dive into any particular topic or structure that I've covered here on the channel. There is all episodes starting from the beginning with 196 videos. Then I've broken down individual playlists covering the function of the Step Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, the Great Pyramid, the Central Pyramid, New Grange, and a group explaining lightning and stone circles. And if you're new to the channel or if you haven't seen it yet, also go watch episode 106 regarding lightning, the power source of the Egyptian pyramids, and the symbolism of the white horse, which is perhaps one of the most important videos on this channel. So now, with all of that covered, welcome everyone to the land of Chem, and without further ado, here we go with tonight's episode. And to begin, this is an article by Noel Wheeler in the journal Antiquity, discussing world archaeology regarding the discovery of the shaft system of the Great Pyramid's Queen's Chamber. And a critical detail to understand is that these shafts did not open up on the inside of the chamber, nor do they go to the outside of the pyramid. As you can see here, that Wayman Dixon found these shafts by sounding in 1872 and broke through the remaining thickness of approximately one H or one hand of solid stone of the walls to open them up. And you can see here in these pictures, the amount of stone that had to be removed and broken through to open up these shafts, again, approximately the width of one hand. 
and breaking through the limestone walls, revealed these two shafts on the northern and southern side of the queen's chamber. So they were never open to the inside of the chamber. They were completely sealed with stone. And these shafts do not go to the outside of the pyramid. So they are definitely not air shafts. So what were they for? First, let's take a look at some exclusive footage from a recent private special permission access inside of the Great Pyramid during the last Land of Chem tour, where I took my group into the Queen's Chamber, and you can see this component for yourself. Let's take a look at the Jetty Project and Gatenbrink's door, where they used a robot to explore both the northern and southern shafts of the Queen's Chamber. Now, unfortunately, they were not able to fully navigate the complex turns of the northern shaft, so we still don't know what may be discovered inside of that shaft. And the following hypothesis is simply a proposal of a potential functional component that could have been employed during the sulfuric acid chemical manufacturing process that was occurring inside of these chambers based on what was discovered inside of the southern shaft, which you can see here in this depiction from realrobotics.com, showing the quote unquote door embedded with two copper fittings. And it was also revealed that this stone is not just regular limestone, but rather Tura limestone with a completely finished surface. So clearly the material and the execution of this piece of stone was of critical importance to the structure. And it just so happens that Tura limestone isn't just calcium carbonate. It also contains crystalline quartz. And we know from many previous discussions that quartz crystal will produce ultrasound waves when the material is subjected to an external electric field. So essentially, we have an ultrasound transmitter installed within the southern shaft of the Queen's Chamber, which brings me to this device, an ultrasonic flow meter. And I'll quote here. An ultrasonic flow meter is a non-invasive sensor, meaning that it is outside of the pipe and not in contact with the fluid. The flow meter propagates sound waves through the pipe wall into the flowing liquid. Sound familiar? It should, as this fits precisely with the configuration of the shaft system and the material properties of the Tura limestone block. 
So how does this thing work? I'll quote a few things here. First, what is an ultrasonic flow meter? Ultrasonic flow meters, which are a type of volumetric flow meter, are non-intrusive flow sensors that use acoustic vibrations to measure the flow rate of a liquid. Ultrasonic meters are ideal for automated wastewater applications or any dirty liquid which is conductive or water-based. These flow meters are also ideal for applications where low pressure drop, chemical compatibility, and low maintenance are all requirements. These three details, of course, all being very relevant to the Egyptian pyramid design and the proposed function. Next, how does an ultrasonic flow meter work? Ultrasonic flow meter technology is a non-contact means of measuring the velocity of a fluid. They are clamp-on devices that attach to the exterior of the pipe and enable measurement of corrosive liquids without damage to the ultrasonic sensor. Portable ultrasonic flow meters are also available to aid in industrial application. Again, all of this should be sounding very familiar, specifically in regard to these corrosive liquids, as I have proposed that the Great Pyramid of Giza was designed to produce a dilute solution of sulfuric acid. But I also want to clarify that the monitoring device or meter inside of this shaft system within the Queen's Chamber wouldn't really be monitoring flow as there wasn't moving fluids through this system, but rather a type of volume, temperature, and pressure monitoring system, as you can see here, with an open channel flow meter. In this case, the ultrasonic element is actually measuring the height of the water in an open channel. Based on the geometry of the channel, the flow can be determined from the height. The ultrasonic sensor usually also has a temperature sensor with it because the speed of sound in air is affected by the temperature. So how does this work in relation to the Great Pyramid and Queen's Chamber? Let's start with the southern shaft as this is the only one that's been explored in depth. The quartz crystal embedded Tura limestone slab will act as your transmitting crystal. As the electric field from lightning are stored within this dielectric material, the copper fittings facilitate the transmission of the field directly into the limestone slab. This concentration of electric fields within the stone activate the inverse piezoelectric property of the quartz crystal, producing ultrasound waves. Those waves propagate through the southern shaft, which is not in direct contact with the fluid inside of the chamber. The fluctuations of volume, temperature, and pressure within the queen's chamber can then be detected by the receiver, which we may find inside of the northern shaft. So I've inverted this component here with the transmitter on the southern side, the fluid filled chamber in the middle, and the receiver on the northern side. Now, here we have the queen's chamber. And let's take the geometry of the chamber here with this square, section and this triangle section and apply it to the diagram. So this Tura limestone embedded quartz fitted with copper becomes the transmitter within the southern shaft. And the northern shaft would be the receiving end. And this system could be used to monitor the water level fluctuations in the system during the filling stages and perhaps was even calibrated to detect when all of these factors indicated that the final product of dilute sulfuric acid had been produced to then initiate the extraction process. This is of course all contingent on a more thorough exploration of the northern shaft. But this hypothesis fits nicely 
with the configuration and material properties of what has been discovered in the southern shaft and would provide an effective mechanism for a non-invasive monitoring system to track the volume, temperature, and pressure stages of the internal chemical reaction sequence. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 127, the function of the Queen's Chamber Shaft System. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And in this week's Sunday site visit, we continue our exploration of the lost and forgotten areas of the Giza Plateau. This is an episode you do not want to miss. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube. If you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. If you want to help support the channel, check out the Land of Chem members only section and thelandofchem.com. If you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch, if you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at the Land of Chem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, Thank you all so much for the support. I think that is it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.